When I was younger, just a bad little kid My mama noticed funny things I did Like shooting puppies with a BB gun I'd poison guppies when I was done I'd find a pussycat bash its head That's when my mama said What did she say? She said, my boy, I think someday You'll find a way to make your natural tendencies pay You'll be a dentist You have a talent for causing things for a child, nothing is more unsettling than the first time they ever go to a dentist's office. You're in this strange, sterile environment. You have strangers surrounding you. You've never met them before. They have all these weird-looking, sharp instruments, and they want to put them into your mouth. It's terrifying. What could be more terrifying than that? Well, maybe leaving with swollen lips and infected gums, with massive abscesses after having eight of your teeth ripped out, or welts on your forehead and choke marks around your neck, or maybe, maybe even this. Well, that is the exact experience the children had under Howard S. Schneider, a licensed and practicing dentist in the state of Florida. In fact, this is his specialty, pediatric dentistry. And as you can see from the video, he does a real bang-up fucking job of taking care of the kids. Now recently, over the last four weeks, he's come under national media attention, especially in the state of Florida, for numerous allegations of child abuse. And you don't have to take my word for it. Hell, go look at the Google reviews for his practice. Hundreds upon hundreds of people talking about similar experiences when they brought their children to see this man. And while a good majority of these are very recent, you should always take them with a grain of salt, many of them are from years and years ago, or they recount things that happened years and years ago. Here's one that was posted two weeks ago from Shavin McCready. I took my son there in June of 1999. My son was three at the time. He is now 18 and to this day remembers being strapped to a Power Ranger chair. He removed eight teeth from front, four top and four bottom. My son tripped and knocked three of his top teeth back into his gums, which is the reason we had to visit Dr. Schneider in the first place. I remember the doctor telling me I couldn't go back there because I wouldn't be able to take the crying. Being young and dumb, I trusted the professional to take care of my child. Pulling eight teeth caused him to have a speech impediment. It took years to correct it, and he still mumbles to this day. I am infuriated now, and am willing to sign whatever it takes to remove this man from practice. 1999. 16 years ago. Here's a posting from Cheryl Davis just last week. I took my grandson to him about five years ago. He wasn't the nicest man, but seemed okay until the day my grandson came out and said, Granny, he hurted me real bad. I said, what happened? He was so distraught. He said he pulled my tooth and didn't put any medicine in my mouth. It took me a long time to settle him down. I told him, you will never have to come back here again. That was our last visit. You figure it out if your child is going to go there. Here's a review from three years ago. This man is horrible. He capped my son's front teeth with silver caps, painted them white, and three have fallen out within four months. He straps kids down with a buckle in a chair, and it is heartbreaking. He does the same thing to every little kid. We took my son back, and he tried to pull his tooth with no medicine or anything. I walked straight out. I was so mad. I've seen a little girl in there with a swollen face because he won't pull their teeth. He caps them and they're still getting infected. I warn you, do not take your child there. They are mean and have no idea what they're doing. So not only does he not provide medicine, and this is a consistent complaint of people who have brought their children to him, he gives them fillings, silver fillings, and then paints them. Now, I'm, I'm fairly certain that dentistry has standards about painting things in somebody's mouth. You would figure there would be health concerns about doing that, especially after digging around and scraping around and bleeding gums, the last thing you want to do is put some kind of paint into somebody's mouth because you're too cheap to use a better kind of filling. Here's another one from three years ago. Horrible person who should be put out of business. My son had knocked teeth out, and Dr. Schneider was the only Medicaid dentist I could find. 
When I called the office, I told them what had happened. When we showed up for our appointment, the staff thought we were there for just a routine cleaning. When he was finally seen, I stressed to the doctor that my son would need to be put under. He said, no problem, and we scheduled another appointment. When we arrived for that one, he told me my son would be strapped to a board with only Novocaine and laughing gas, which he never turned on. The whole time, my son was screaming and in terrible pain. He kept telling my son to shut up. It doesn't really hurt. Again, another person who relates the same experience. Strapping children down, not administering the proper amounts of Novocaine or gas or whatever chemicals are needed to sedate the child for whatever the procedure is, even after informing parents that that would be happening. But I think this one really cuts to the heart of the matter. This is a review that was put up three weeks ago from Joni Gallion. Horrible dentist. Very mean. I left his office very uneasy about how aggressive he was with my child. He is practically the only dentist in Jacksonville that takes Medicaid. So a lot of moms don't have a choice and don't know about this man. I wouldn't let him near any child or anybody for that matter. He has been abusing kids for years. I don't understand why he is still practicing. He does not even deserve one star for this review. Well, it seems that Mr. Schneider found a real lucrative way of making money by performing unnecessary, painful operations on people too poor to afford decent medical insurance. By being the only provider that will accept Medicaid, he has cornered the market. So it's not unreasonable to assume that is why he's always capping teeth for children that have no reason to be capped why he refuses to use gases or Novocaine, because that costs money that comes out of his pocket. So when you look at that video of that kid screaming his head off, he is screaming his head off because nothing has been given to him while he digs into their mouth. But those are just Google reviews, right? We can't really take them to heart. How do we know that this is really true? How do we know that this man isn't some innocent person that's being you know, persecuted for some odd reason? Well, Action News covers that. It turns out 20 years ago he was sued for malpractice for doing the exact same thing to a five-year-old child. A mother brought him to court and sued him for malpractice for performing unnecessary medical procedures. And she won. She won her malpractice suit against Mr. Schneider. And yet here we are 20 years later and he has still been doing the same thing. For 20 years this man was able to abuse children and to profit off of it and not one organization that he was a part of stopped him. In fact, they still promote him, but I'll get to that in a minute. And just how much money is Mr. Schneider taking in from doing this kind of damage to children? Well, how does $4 million in Medicaid payments in the last five years sound? Now, I don't know much about dentistry, and I could be way off, but for a small practicing clinic to make $4 million in five years seems awfully fucking strange to me. How many of these operations would he need to perform to make that kind of fucking money? And he's not putting any money in to getting gases or Novocaine or any of that stuff. He's not paying out of pocket for that because every single parent that's related to one of these stories has said the same fucking thing. This man operates on kids without giving them anything to ease their pain because that would cut into his bottom fucking line. And I want to emphasize that parents did try to do something about this. People went to the police. People went to hospitals with their kids after taking them out of the dentist's office. They contacted social services. Nothing happened to this man. Not one fucking thing happened to this man. The only person that's got even a modicum of justice up until this point is this woman. One woman walked up and actually put her hands on Dr. Schneider. You see the nurse right there getting him away and took him inside. Then that woman just ran off. But perhaps what's most disgusting about this are the organizations he is a member of and what they advocate when it comes to dentistry. So who are those organizations? Well, let's take a look. The first he's a member of is the Southeastern Society of Pediatric Dentistry, the SSPD. I want to read their little mission statement to you because it's fucking ridiculous. Their mission, our mission the advancements of the science and art of pediatric dentistry to encourage, sponsor, and advance the achievement of high ethical standards of practice, education, and research in the art and science of all phases of dentistry for children, adolescents, and the handicapped. Could you imagine how bad it is to bring a kid in who can tell you what's happened to them? Imagine if your kid is handicapped. Good fucking God. And this shithouse of an organization, this scum-sucking fucking society, he's a member. He's a member of them. But what are the requirements for membership in the Southeastern Society of Pediatric Dentistry? 
Active membership in this society is open to all pediatric dentists located in the states of Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, who are members of the American Dental Association or National Dentist Association, are engaged in full-time practice research or teaching pediatric dentistry. They must also be a member of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentists, the AAPD. So wait a minute. To be a member of the SSPD, you need to be a member of the AAPD. Well, let's go take a look at the AAPD. So what exactly does the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, what is their vision statement? What is their mission statement? The vision of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry is optimal health and care for infants and children through adolescents, including those with special health care needs. The Academy is a leader in representing the oral health care interests of children. The pediatric dentist is recognized primary oral health care provider and a resource for specialty referral. The mission of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry is to advocate policies, guidelines, and programs that promote optimal oral health and oral health care for infants and children through adolescents, including those with special health care needs. The Academy serves and represents its membership in the areas of professional development and governmental and legislative activities. It is a liaison to other health care groups and the public. Now, if you look at their Twitter feed, these people are more than happy to help find you the perfect dentist for your child. In fact, if you click that link, let's see where it takes you. Well, it takes you to a, a search engine where you can find the person that you need. Well, how, how lovely is that? Let's, let's uh, I don't know, let's take a look at this area code. Well, what do you know? The first fucking result on the AAPD's search engine for finding the perfect dentist for your child is Howard S. Schneider. What a fucking joke. So you're telling me that at the end of the day, you're telling me that you can lose malpractice suits you can have people file police reports. You can have parents come forward for years and years and years telling people that he is abusing children. And the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry and the Southeastern Society of Pediatric Dentistry have no fucking qualms about that. Not only will they allow him to be a member, they will actively promote his practice. This world has gone tits up insane. When you can't become a dentist because you make a joke on Facebook, yet you can abuse children for 20 years so you can make extra money and then be promoted by the same organizations that regulate dentistry and membership. There is no hope. How crazy have we become? Where in the fuck are our priorities?